gosh dang, this game looks so good in the HD remake. Hey everyone, my name's Christine and welcome to Hot Lettuce TV. And today I'm here to answer a question. Can I beat Bioshock using only a wrench? In what country is there a place for people like me? Andrew Ryan, no gods or kings, own the man. That man's got some long abs. Rapture. <laughs> I like how there was just one crab like, Rapture. <laughs> Also, you see this guy? That's Johnny. You see, Johnny? This is why you should have had a wrench. First, let's set the ground rules for this challenge. I must use a wrench to kill enemies. That means no guns, no telekinesis, and no lethal plasmids like incinerate are to be used to kill enemies in this run. You're a jerk. You're rude. Nope, you missed. Oh God, there's two of you, isn't there? Nope, you just got a much bigger hitbox. That... Why are hip, oh my God, what are hitboxes in this game? What was that? I hit that man from like 10 feet away. The first big daddy. I wonder how hard that's gonna be to fight with a wrench. <laughs> oh boy. Keep watching folks. He's gonna go absolutely bananas foster on my ass. Now I have to use some plasmids to continue the game, but the rule here is I can't use lethal plasmids to kill enemies. You see this guy? That's Atlas. Atlas loves wrenches. When he was a kid, his house had a terrible leak. So terrible, it almost caused him to get leak pneumonia. And do you know what saved his life? A wrench. That's right. The wrench's name was Clarissa. He would go on to marry her one day. Atlas really lived his life devoted to wrenches. So I knew he'd be the perfect guide for this challenge. All right, so yeah, no, this is definitely, this range is definitely more wild than it should be. How tall is Jack from... Bioshock. When mom and dad put me blah, 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 that doesn't tell me how tall. Okay, he's six foot two. That's a pretty good, he's got a, okay. All right, so he's got like a three, his arm is roughly like three foot one inch. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty long. So being he's six foot two, his arm should be roughly three feet and one inch each, which made me wonder how long is the, wrench <laughs> in Bioshock. There is actually an answer for the, are you kidding me? This 12 inch pipe wrench. This lady with a gun baby foolishly believed she could beat Taffy Jack in his Laffy Taffy arms. So being she was obviously an unfit parent, I took her baby. What I don't understand is if he's just gonna kill her to get the, the slug anyway, why would he shush her? That man just jump smacked her. He just literally jumped into the air and pistol whipped her. Like that, that man just, I don't know why I forgot about that little detail, but that's hilarious. Things definitely started getting harder once there were more people with gun babies to contend with. Oh, he got me with the ambush. Uh, no, 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 guns are for cowards. Stop using guns. <laughs> We're gonna break out the, the dodgy maneuvers. Oh God, we're facing many damages. Ow, ow, ow. All right, get drunk. Can't feel pain when drunk. Finally, after I won my first fight, it was on the Neptune's bounty where I would find my first pet helicopter. Oscillate, shoot Nate, killing, with a C, assistant robot, or Oscar for short. The adoption process for helicopters is a little tricky as you have to pass a weird liquid dynamics based IQ test first, but I was more than ready. And then we use this elbow pipe. Yep, and then that goes right there. Perfect, easy, boom. Unfortunately, he had to be put down because, well, he's not wrench. You're not a wrench. You're not a wrench, you have to die. It wasn't long before I reached my second plasma. Another combat tactic of the coward. Second plasmid, incinerate, which I also can't use because I know this is a very powerful one. <laughs> this is, level three incinerate is insane. Didn't need it. Haha, <laughs> -ha, hacks. See, what can you do about it, huh? What can you do about it? What can you do about it? What do you, what do, you do about it, huh? To my surprise, this fight was pretty easy, but my first big struggle was just over the hill. All right, so. This will be my first time attempting to fight one of these. Uh, we've already saved, so how much damage am I gonna do on first hit? Point. Nothing. I do nothing. I do nothing. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh God. Oh God. 
I'm sorry. 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 What if I just... I'll exploit this. Can I... Can I exploit this? Ow! Fuck. Okay. It was then I remembered the incinerate room. If I could find a window or something to do what I did there, I could pull this off. Aha, he can't reach me through here. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to get him. 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 I'm going to get, I'm gonna get you. I'm going to get, get you through the bar. I'm going to get you through the bar. It didn't take the big boy very long to figure out my plan, though. Eventually, I had to leave this spot in search of a new tactic. This is a cheap tactic. You're doing cheap tactics. Wait, I think I just remembered something. Ha ha. Can you defeat me through here? Can you defeat me through here? He's a little confused. <laughs> I think I found the exploit. I think I found the exploit. Now I got this. It was then I realized the incinerate room inspired this idea for a reason. It was as if God himself spoke to me saying, return to the sacred place. What's he gonna do about it? Wait, did I get him though? No, he's low on health though. I think I can still get him. I think he doesn't reset health. So with a little bit of persistence, some clever thought, and a few deaths, I eventually took the final blow and defeated my first big daddy using nothing more than a wrench. I got this. I got this. I got it. Oh my God. Half an exploited game. That's right. You can't beat me. I've got the master brain. I got this. I can cheese this game. It was then I had to test a theory. Was Target Dummy too busted for this challenge? It doesn't do any damage to him, so I, I don't see that as anything that could break the rules of this run. I'll put another one of me right here. Yep, this is very useful. Oh, bonk. Next we meet Peach Wilkins and get something very important to the run. But first, let's test Target Dummy. Um, do you just bypass this? You don't care? You don't give a shit? Okay, all right. It doesn't care about the target dummy at all. <laughs> it was, however, super useful for big crowds. And this. I have an interesting method. I have an interesting idea. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna try it. Oh my God, it's working. It turns out you can actually strategically place target dummies to cause turret on turret violence. Now, oh, wait, can I? <laughs> How are you gonna stop me, huh? Huh? That's right. You're too stupid to look through the floor for fights. <laughs> like that fight literally just went, these guys are just minding their own business. Like I'm gonna do a physical interpretation of how that fight went. So like these guys are like, yeah, no, Ted, what were you gonna have for lunch today? And then I'm just down there like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they die. Now, what was I doing again? The camera. You see, when I use the camera on the splicers, it makes them feel desired, sought after, and definitely not creeped out. So I went on on a shutterbug spree. I was really gonna need to know how to whack these splicers delicates if I wanted to complete this challenge. All right, now we have all we need to get this run going. Next, Clarissa 2 and I had to make our way to the bathosphere and smuggler's hideout to reunite Atlas with Clarissa 1 and their half wrench, half human children. Being underwater so much was giving Atlas leak pneumonia flashbacks. And they had figured out living underwater might be the cause of it. Oh no! I didn't see this coming. Oh my goodness. But the bathospheres were working for Andrew Ryan, who hated wrenches and Irish guys who married repair tools. He sent a bunch of splicers my way who I took some very lovely pictures of. And then they met Clarissa too. After that, I thought I would test target dummy some more. And, um, there we go. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> after watching the rocket carousel, Clarissa 2 and I explored Arcadia, experienced allergy season in Rapture, and then used man-made chemicals to solve deforestation. All right, got all the stuff to do it. Put it in there. Got it, no problem. But as it turns out, Splicers, on top of being wrenches, also hated trees. Oxygen is for the weak! They cried as they spilled into the deforestation lab to stop me from saving the trees, but Clarissa 2 and I were ready. So now with Rapture's trees saved and most of the citizens of Arcadia dead, balance is restored. 
Now we move on to my favorite chapter in the game, Fort Frolic. For those of you unaware, Fort Frolic is an area of rapture run by a delightful madman named Sanders Cohen who turns corpses into art, which is pretty god dang metal. The artist has a duty to seduce the ear and delight the spirit. First, he wanted me to murder Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick was a phenomenal pianist, but he absolutely refused to play anything about wrenches or dead body art. He had to go. <laughs> I didn't realize he would blow up if I hit him with a wrench. After dealing with Fitzpatrick, I needed to soothe myself. So I played some finger popping tunes. Next, I had to kill Martin Finnegan, who kept making human popsicles. Anyways, the fight was easy, even with only a wrench. Things stuck in John Lee. <laughs> You weren't even hard to kill, dude. Then I got this tonic, and it changed everything. Don't make me use this. Oh my god, that's actually busted. That's actually busted. That's actually busted. That's actually busted. Ow. Now watch. Whenever I freeze you, you're not gonna know which one's the real me. God, I actually do a lot of wrench damage now. You don't know which one's the real me. You don't know which one's the real me. Afterward, Cohen made me kill some other people. Then I killed him. It's all kind of a blur, really. Then I planted the bomb. Did I mention we built a bomb? We built a bomb. Wire clusters, you put them right in the casing. Finally, after meeting Atlas, killing our first pet helicopter, saving the trees, and building a growing relationship with Clarissa too, it's time to go into the office of Andrew Ryan and end wrench hate. God dang just left it in there. But wait, Andrew made a bit of a point while Clarissa too and I were blind with rage. Would you kindly? Powerful phrase. It was then Clarissa too and I learned that Atlas had been lying to us the whole time. He knew Andrew Ryan would ask me to kill him with a golf club knowing he could never put a beloved wrench through that. Atlas tricked me so I wouldn't complete the challenge, but he miscalculated one thing. If Andrew Ryan loves wrenches, he isn't an enemy and I said I wouldn't kill enemies with weapons besides the wrench. Now, it's time for the artist formerly known as Atlas to die by wrench. Also, at some point I got to become a big daddy. Their boots are loud. I almost kind of wish I didn't get them. Then I tried to guard a little sister. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Fontaine's betrayal of wrenches in this challenge wouldn't be forgotten or forgiven. It was time for vengeance. I did all the like struggle in the early part of the game. Oh, you sweet, sweet summer child. You see, in my arrogance of being able to do so much damage and freeze enemies, I forgot. Fontaine is a frost phase where ice damage can't hurt him. Why? Whoa. Oh no. I can't do frost damage. How do I do this? How do I do this? How can I do this? I have to let him kill me. I have to let him kill me. The load last save game, which is hopefully not right when I walk in the room. I think it's right when I walk in the room. Oh, f me. Seeing as how the game last auto saved me just before the boss fight, I decided to try and load the game from before the fight to see if I could find a gene bank and get rid of any elemental effects on my wrench. Unfortunately, the last save I had was in the elevator, but I had come too far to give up now. I had to destroy Fontaine and finally beat Bioshock using only a wrench. So here's the plan. I blazed through the first phase of the fight easy, but the second phase, he's immune to frost damage, which is the only kind of damage my wrench itself can do which means I had to find a way to deal damage using the wrench that wasn't frost damage. It was then I remembered. The god dang barrels. If I could somehow trick Fontaine into standing too close to one of the explosive barrels, I could whack it with a wrench, which would do unfrosted damage. Okay. Problem solved. Mamoe, Mamoe. <laughs> Aha, I figured it out, okay. All I had to do was get over there and hit the barrels. And I gotta get back. There is a gene bank right there. There is a gene bank right in the boss fight room. 
I could have actually switched genetics. It's fine. I figured it out. I got it anyway. It was then I ran into our next problem. Fontaine was now completely invincible to the wrench for some reason. He was so driven to ruin the run that he literally learned to resist wrench damage. Get over here. Oh, you're by the barrels. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, that works out. Unfortunately, it didn't take long before I started running out of barrels. I need barrels. I need more barrels. Oh my God, I need more barrels. With no barrels showing up, I needed a new plan. <laughs> I'm running out of options. I'm trying. I'm truly trying my best. Nitro splicer, okay. Seeing the nitro splicer gave me an idea. Remember how I used target dummy to kill that turret earlier? What if I could recreate this, except only this time instead of turret on turret violence, we could just get the nitro splicer to throw a grenade at Fontaine. It was a long shot, but it was my only hope to beat Fontaine. If I can get him into an oil pile, actually. All right, thank you. I think this is gonna kill him, but I don't know what to do afterward if this doesn't work. Okay. Oh my God, we had to outsmart the game so hard to make this work. I sent you topside. That was so frustrating. So after a rigorous battle where I had to pull out every trick I could think up, the final needle was stuck in and Fontaine was dead. We basically beat it in right at like seven hours. So that's pretty cool. I, uh, I didn't expect to actually make it that far. For those of you that stuck around to the end, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the journey and I'm planning on getting new challenge runs out weekly. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe, like the video and maybe leave a comment telling me your favorite part or suggesting a challenge for the future. As for right now, I'm Christine. This is Hot Lettuce TV and you have a good one. Peace. Come on.